Hey everyone, it's Diego Viteri. Welcome to a new video with Terry Boxing. Today I want to show you the five rules you must follow if you want to slip punches. So if you, don't, if you don't follow each of these rules, it will be almost impossible for you to be successful at slipping punches. So let's begin with the video. The first rule is you need to understand the six basic ways of slipping punches. Number one and number two are the basic slipping punches from for straight punches. You just transfer your weight to any of the legs, you transfer your weight, so you take your head out of the center line. In that way, straight punches can go through. You need to be, you need to make sure you never go, you, you never take your head passing your, your knee because that will mean I'm out of I'm out of balance. So always have balance. Transfer your weight to one side or to the other. That's number one and two of the sleeping punches to the left or to the right. Number three and four are the roll unders. And basically, what you're gonna do is you got you are gonna draw a U letter, a U letter using your head. So imagine you you're gonna draw a U letter. What you're gonna do is basically squat first. You're gonna draw the U and then turn to the other side. You're gonna turn to the other side. And the same thing if you go to the other side. You first squat, then you go under. Make sure you don't, you don't use your waist, you don't go like this. This is, not, this is not a proper way because you're out of balance, your head is passing your, your knee and, 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 and also you can get into an uppercut. Number five is just ducking. You are with your opponent, you feel any punch, just duck, you just squat. In the same position, just squat. That's the fifth one, it's really easy. And the sixth one is actually a little bit more advanced, but you have to know it, and it's the pullback. And the pullback, there's in two ways. You can go from a regular stance, a re from a re regular stance, you pull back, but since you don't want to lose balance, you have to take your rear leg a step, a step back. You st a step back, so you pull away from your opponent's punch. You have a step back, and your opponent's punch can, can, can hit you. And the other way is if you have a wide stance, if you already have a wide stance, you, you can go, you can just move, move your head or, 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 your, or your torso a lot easier. So that's the six main ways that you have to understand before you get into any, any of the other rules. Rule number two, you have to remember that you have to study your opponent before you start to slip any punches. If you go into, into a sparring, first round, and you just try to slip punches, you will get caught with all of them. Remember that we never see the punches coming and we slip them. We always anticipate that we live delayed with reality, as I said in a previous video. We live delayed with reality. We have to see it first, we have to go to our brain, send that signal to our muscles, come back to our brain. So it will take a little bit longer until the stimulus and move. So it's impossible to see your opponent's movement. So for that, you need to study his patterns and you have to get into a rhythm. It's like jazz music or like a choreography or dancing. You need to be synchronized with your opponent. So for that, the first round, it's really important so you can see his pattern, how he moves, how he throws his punches, and it's subconscious. It's not that you're gonna see your opponent and you're gonna be trying to identify every single movement, but they'll be subconscious. You will be, you'll be gathering information, recollecting data, and after the first round, after you get some data, your body will be, will have that rhythm with your opponent and it's gonna be a lot easier. So make sure you study your opponent. Rule number three is that you have to make realistic drills whenever you are training. One of the worst mistakes I've seen in most people is that they do this slip and slip. They go slip and slip. This is a, a, a terrible, terrible mistake because you can never slip a straight punch and then slip the other punch. Normally, if you see professional fighters do it, it's just because they, wanna, they want the mechanics, the movement. But I would suggest that you, you should always uh, train with, with something real, realistic, maybe a slip a punch, then roll, or maybe roll and then slip, maybe mo use a little bit of your, your footwork, but never try to do a slip a slip, because that will be programmed into your brain, into your ne neuromuscular system, and that will get automatic, and that will be a complete mistake. If you try to slip and slip in a fight, you will get caught with a punch. The next rule that I will suggest is that always add little steps to your slipping punches. If you just slip punches with your opponent, and he's in front of you, that could work. But if he positions himself to, to, to in an angle, it will be really easy for him to punch you. You cannot be staying still. You cannot never stop your legs to be, from being connected with your body. Remember, always having everything in boxing connected 
connected so you can move better. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna add little steps. These little steps, if I slip to this side, I will, I, will, I will do a little step to the side. If I move to that side, I will, I will do a little step here. I'll pull back, I'll do a little step. So I move, I'll do little steps, I'll move to the, to the right, and that way, it's really easy to be, to be positioning myself, be moving, and my steps won't stop. My legs won't stop. I will be moving, positioning. Our last rule is that your defense or your slipping punches have to be efficient. What do I mean with efficient? Efficient means that you can do something about uh, using your slipping. If you just slip punches and your opponent can't punch you, but if you can't punch him either, that won't work. I, you can punch me, but I can't either. So that doesn't work. The, the whole point is, I don't get hit, but I can hit you. So make sure you always have imbalance and using a counter attack. So, so that, that's an efficient defense for me. If you, if you defend and you slip a punch and then you counter. You slip a punch and then you counter. You're moving and you counter. So make sure you work your defense always with a counter. So you make your defense efficient. It doesn't matter how much you slip the punches if you don't punch your opponent. Thanks everyone for watching my video. Remember to work all of these rules with a partner, doing some drills, using a tennis ball, throwing, to, throwing against the wall, and you, you can slip those punches using noodles, pool noodles. You can, be, you can be using anything, but you have to drill a thousand, a thousand, a million times so you can make all those movements automatic. I'll see you next week for the next class.